What's going on, Bitwise Guy here, coming at you with the fifth installment of the Rust tutorial series. Uh, in this tutorial, we're going to be going over a fairly simple yet incredibly important topic in uh, in the Rust ecosystem. Um, this is specifically cargo uh, and using cargo to manage your dependencies. So. Without further ado, let's get started. <clears throat> Go ahead and we're going to scaffold the new projects. We'll say cargo, new, and we'll call this uh, learning depths. I've already scaffolded this project, so no need to do anything else. Alright, uh, so cd into your uh, directory. Um, and then we're going to be doing, so what you want to do is uh, have a look at your directory. Now, you'll notice that we've got two uh, items in our um, results here. We've got a folder called source, which we've been through lots of times. And we've got this mysterious new file here called the cargo.toml file. <clears throat> so the cargo.toml file is, uh, we haven't been through this yet, but the cargo.toml file is basically a definitions file for the cargo um, Rust manager. I don't really know what they call it, but anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Um, but anyway, essentially what the cargo.toml file is, is it tells, it tells um, Cargo how to manage your dependencies, who wrote the project, uh, and so on and so forth. So, let's go ahead and we're going to add a dependency to the cargo.toml file. So, go ahead and do sudo nano cargo.toml. Alright, so you can see in the toml file, just quickly, we've got a few things already. We've got the name of our package, we've got the name of the, um, sorry, we've got the version number, uh, and we've got authors, in this case, myself. These sections are basically broken up by um, these little markers here. So, a marker in the cargo.toml file is defined like this, and the and uh, cargo is looking for um, basically looking for these things already predefined. So to add a new dependency to our project, we're going to add a new section here. Now you can have spaces in, and I prefer to just push it one line down. Uh, the section, if you couldn't guess already, is called dependencies, just like that. Now straight under here, we're going to be listing our dependencies. In this case, I'm going to be using the dependency IRC. Now, I don't actually care if IRC, um, <clears throat> the Rust library or not, works. Uh, it's really not that important to me. All I care about is that I'm able to build the project. In fact, I'm not even going to try and connect it to a IRC server. So, once you've got that in there, um, save it. Whatever editor you're using, it doesn't really matter. Um, and now let's cd into our source directory, and we'll say um, touch main.rs and we will say sudo nano main.rs alright now what I'm gonna do over here is since this is not a specific uh, tutorial for Rust is I'm going to copy and paste the code from their github so let's go ahead and paste that alright cool now um, I'm not showing you how to use their library, and in fact, I just picked a library at random um, that didn't require any other kinds of setup, um, so just simply the dependency. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, save this, yes, I want to write, exit. All right, now we're going to go cd up one directory, and I'm going to clear here. Now, all we have to do uh, now is we don't have to download any kind of dependencies and, and manually set them up. All we need to do is say cargo... Uh, actually, we'll need sudo cargo build, and we'll hit enter. And what you'll see now is, unlike before, is cargo returns the first message, which says updating registry. The next thing it does is it downloads the IRC library, which we've requested. It then goes ahead and compiles all the dependencies that IRC has asked for in its own dependency file. So we'll go and we'll wait for this to finish. It shouldn't be too much longer now, hopefully. Open SSL sometimes takes a little bit uh, longer than normal. Alright, and we are done. Okay. So as you can see, um, our, our, sorry, our project has been built. 
uh, along with all the dependencies that are required for this Rust project. Now, this is incredibly useful for uh, a number of reasons. Previously, if you didn't have some kind of package manager like NuGet or whatever uh, for any other language, it was very difficult to be able to pull in all your dependencies and, I guess, uh, sanely distribute them. Um, so, Cargo does that for the Rust environment. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to be moving this over here so you guys can see this little trippy ass recording window. And um, I'm going to be pulling up the website where you can search for dependencies. Righto. Okay, so here's our website for searching for dependencies. The website is called crates.io. And this is the Rust community's uh, crate host. Now, when you do a dependency inside of a cargo.toml file, and then you request for uh, cargo to build your project, what it'll do is it will go update the registry from GitHub, and um, <clears throat> this is kind of like a predefined uh, crate.io index, which you can see that it's uh, pulled in here. So it says github.com rustlang crates.io dash index. Now, I actually haven't looked at this file, but from what I understand, it is pointing at this website. Um, and it has an API which, uh, as they said here, you can use to interact with the website. So, the, w the way that you find a specific dependency is you just simply search for it up here, find it where you want it, and here it is. And you can see they give you statistics about it, um, you can find documentation, you can go to the repository. It will also tell you what the, this crate specifically relies on. Uh, however, as you can see here, um, we've got quite a few more dependencies that have been compiled. Uh, if you don't have these dependencies already, Cargo will automatically go and download them for you from crates.io. Um, but essentially, these, these projects here also had dependencies which had to be compiled for the project. Now, it says cargo.toml here, and it says IRC equals 0.9.2. Um, there is a shorthand in uh, crates which is basically used for keeping your dependencies up to date. I wouldn't recommend that in a, in a production environment whereby there could be breaking changes from version to version. But for development it's a good idea to do uh, equals star. And what that will do is it will simply go to that project and ask crates.io for the latest version of the project. Okay, that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed. Um, there will be another video coming out uh, pretty soon, so um, stay tuned for that. I am on holidays now, so I should be able to get out a couple more videos over the next couple of days. Um, in, the next, in the next video, we're going to be having a more in-depth look at actually building an IRC bot, um, and we're going to be going through uh, some more features such as closures uh, in the Rust language. Anyway, rate, comment, subscribe, or don't do any of that shit, I don't really care, um, but it does help me if you guys want to see more videos, um, then at least I know what I'm doing, so, uh, 